afternoon everybody hope you're all okay and uh, enjoying your weekend so today i'm going to make something can you guess what i'm going to make with these two well there's three ingredients but i forgot to get the other one out any clue what we're making today i'm going to make sauerkraut sauerkraut is great for gut health for your heart oh, cholesterol it does all sorts of goodness it's good for your bones which is why i'm making it well i make it anyway but i'm making it specifically this time for my bones chopped the outer leaves off so you need to chop this as fine as you can well, I bought myself a chopping board the other day. I didn't even take it out of its packet. And it's disappeared. <laughs> it's totally disappeared. I looked everywhere for it. Can't find it. So I'm just going to have to do it by hand. Because I don't want to cut it on my tray. Mm. So you need to cut it as fine as you can. It'll take a while, guys. So I'll just do a bit. See how fine I'm cutting it. It's wafer thin. Actually, I might do one greater. Me being me, I always like to mash things up a bit. So, I've been making this for a few years now, and uh, The initial uh, recipe is just cabbage, white cabbage. But me being me, it's like, oh, what else can we put in this to make it interesting? So I added garlic and black pepper, which I've not got out, which I can add that after. Um, once I've done this, and it is yummy. I made loads of it in Cyprus, gave it away for gifts as well, and everybody loved it. So. Uh, give it a try. It's not hard to make. I'll do this bit and then I'll, uh, I'll come back to you when it's the next bit. That's all the cabbage that I've chopped. Obviously, it would be a lot thinner if I had a chopping board and didn't use my hand to do it. Or you could use a grater, I guess. So, I've cleaned three garlic cloves one big one and two smallish ones because i like it quite garlicky so you could do the same chop this as small as you can obviously i'm doing it again by hand so i'm gonna smell delicious aren't I, later so it's best to use organic cabbage if you can if not then uh, make sure you take at least four layers of leaves off and the bottom two layers you can use um top <clears throat> on top to kind of form a barrier um, you also need a little bit of a weight to hold the cabbage down underneath the juice so you can add at the end you can add a little bit of water to cover the cabbage again use spring water if possible because it's not got all the junk in it if not you can boil some water and let that cool and use that uh, I don't have spring water, so I've boiled some water and that's cooling as a chop. So this is a really good uh, probiotic, better than what any shop-bought stuff that you can get. You can also add in, if you like, a grated green apple, uh, which adds a bit of sweetness because the cabbage and the apple are both prebiotic. And so that encourages the um, probioticness, <laughs> for want of a proper word, it encourages it to turn into probiotics. So I shall leave you a minute while I do this. So the garlic's all chopped and added in. Just going to give it a mix up, and then I'm going to add ground black peppercorn so that. So they're a bit more chunky 
but I can't find it. I've got a big jar full that I brought back from Cyprus already ground. So I'm just using this, which is black pepper. So I'm going to put about a tablespoon-ish, half a tablespoon, whatever your taste is. It's not coming out very fast. Black pepper. I might, oops, might adjust that afterwards. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of Himalayan salt. You can also use Celtic sea salt or sea salt. The chunkier the grains, the better. Although this, the salt does dissolve into the juice, so if you've got chunky salt, it will uh, hopefully leave a little bit of crunch. So you're going to add the two tablespoons of salt, give it a mix, and then comes the fun part. It takes about 10 minutes. Is I'm using vessel and mortar thingy. Okay, but you can use anything. If you've got a steak pounder or anything like that, or you can even use your fingers. But you're gonna now you're gonna bash it. You can use a potato masher as well. You're gonna bash it for about ten minutes so that it releases all the juices and softens the uh, cabbage and the garlic and gets everything all mixed in. So this is taking a little bit longer because it wasn't as finely cut, but this is what consistency you're looking for so it's wet and you should have a little bit of juice at the bottom give it a taste test is it too salty does it need more salt does it need more pepper does it need more garlic in green apple it's better to blend it and add it in although i've not to be honest i've only ever used green apple when i do it with just plain cabbage um but it gives it a bit of sweetness so if you'd like it i mean i suppose it'd work with this one as well the garlic and uh black pepper but I've not used it in this plus I've not got an apple today I'm just going to give this a little bit more time as you see the it's reduced in size and it's wet so once you've got it to the consistency that you want it to you're going to pack it into a jar I think I've made a bit too much <laughs> I'll use a small cabbage <laughs> but I love this stuff it's really yummy when it's ready way better than your store-bought stuff so pack it down make sure there's no air gaps in it anywhere and then this will sit somewhere warm for well depending on where you are if, it, if you're in a hot country three to four weeks if somewhere like England It'll take about four to six weeks until it's ready. I'm going to sit mine right at the back of my counter because the it's, the heat from the fridge comes up through there. But I would definitely recommend you sit it into a bowl or a tray or something uh, because it's going to ferment, which means it's going to bubble over. So you're going to have to check this on a daily basis if it's bubbling too much you're gonna to have to release some uh, gas out of it and you should do that just by on un just unscrewing the lid basically don't take it off just unscrew the lid let some air out and then pass it back up So see I've left a bit of a, it's full up to the edge there, I'll probably get a bit more in that, make sure there's no air gaps, like there's one there, Oops. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this on camera but 
you squeeze it you see the juice coming up it's flopped down that's why water here what's cooled down so i'm just gonna top that up so that all the cabbage is covered so at this point you either put your cabbage leaves in or a weight and they haven't got anything to weigh it down um so i'm just gonna cap this i'm just gonna cap it and that's gonna sit on my countertop for about four to six weeks and then it's ready and then you can put it in the fridge when it's ready and it will still continue to ferment in the fridge but very very slowly because it needs heat to ferment I started making this because of my IBS and my stomach problems and it's, it's addictive it's really nice <laughs> open the fridge and just grab a spoonful Put some water in to cover the cabbage. Yeah, it's important to make sure your cabbage stays covered. Otherwise, you'll get mould and it'll oxidise and it'll not be not be pleasant at all. <laughs> and that's it. Make sure you label your jars. Then you know when you made it and when it's ready. I'm going to see if I can find my other jar now for this for the rust stuff that's left. And um that's how you make sauerkraut. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Enjoy. <laughs>